I thought it would be great if I could tell an old story that was from years ago that never made it to a one-hour special. And uh, the cool part about this story is that it, it now has a different ending. <laughs> the story is called The Gift Basket. Some of you know it, some of you don't know it, but after this, you're never going to forget it. <laughs> all you have to know about this story is that all the people involved have always been and will continue to be friends. That being said, Martin and I, <laughs> all the good ones start like that, Martin and I <laughs> are scheduled to perform in Northern California. Usually we fly. But this particular day, I was having a problem with Southwest Airlines. They wanted me to pay for an extra seat for someone who wasn't traveling with me. <laughs> Take your time, you'll figure it out. <laughs> anyway, I tell Martin, I'm not paying for an extra seat. Let's just drive, it's six hours. <laughs> so we headed north. Three hours into the drive, we're passing through a city called Fresno. And as we're passing, hey, Fresno 559, get us all way. Anyway. As we're passing through Fresno, we start seeing billboards off the side of the freeway that said, performing this weekend at the Radisson Hotel, directly from BET's Comic View and Showtime at the Apollo, comedian G. Riley. And I look at Martina, I go, oh shoot, G's in town. And Martina goes, yeah, I haven't seen G in years. So we're like, let's stop by the hotel and say hi. So we pull into the parking lot. <laughs> we walk in. I tell Martin, he doesn't know we're here. I'm gonna crank call his room. He goes, what are you gonna say? I said, I'm gonna tell him that I'm the front desk and that he just received a gift basket. He goes, what's so funny about a gift basket? I said, I'm gonna describe it over the phone and I'm gonna make all the items that are in this imaginary basket become items that stereotypically a black person might like. But you're crazy. I said, I'll tell you what, we got two hours to kill. How about this? How about we go to the supermarket and we make an actual racist gift basket? and we'll have it delivered and we'll wait outside to see what happens. I said, are you down? <laughs> we go to a store and we start to design the sickest practical joke ever. I get a shopping cart and I'm like, all right, we need a basket. So I find one, I take out the grass, the plastic eggs and the chocolate rabbits and we start hitting the aisles. First item I grab is a fried chicken about that big, okay? <laughs> see how quick that laugh was? <laughs> <laughs> There's a few black people in here like, mother this better be funny. <laughs> it's hysterical. Let me just finish the story and then you could judge me in the parking lot. So anyway, then Martin hands me a miniature watermelon and I put it next to the fried chicken. Here's where it gets interesting. Employees of the store find out what we're doing and they start volunteering to help us finish the basket. Half of the employees were black, which made it so much more accurate. <laughs> aisle after aisle, aisle. One guy was stocking a shelf. He was an older white guy, and we're like, sir, can you help us? What do you need? My buddy Martin and I are trying to make this messed up racist gift basket for our black friend as a practical joke. Can you think of something we can put in there? Without even blinking an eye, the guy was like, ah, you gotta have Kool-Aid. <laughs> It's at the end of the aisle on the right. Malt liquor's an XL over in the back of the store in the freezer section. It's on sale two for one. By the time we get to the register, all these different employees plus us came up with the basket that had fried chicken, watermelon, Kool-Aid, grape soda, barbecue potato chips, sunflower seeds, an ebony magazine, a Chris Rock DVD called Bigger and Blacker, Magnum condoms, Newport cigarettes, a rack of ribs, the recipe for cornbread. It was getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger icing on the cake we find a greeting card that's on clearance from Halloween and it has a picture of three ghosts on the cover wearing sheets <laughs> I tear off the half that says happy Halloween and on the back of the card I write welcome to Fresno love the Chamber of Commerce <laughs> and we stick it to the basket we made it all nice and pretty and we haul ass to the hotel we pull up, we walk in. The basket is hot as hell, so I'm racing in. I get inside and I put it on the counter as fast as I can, bro. It's too perfect. There's a black girl behind the front desk. 
As soon as I put the basket down, I hear. Is that chicken? Ooh, let me see. Hold on. <laughs> what is it? Let me explain. My name is Gabriel. This is Martin. We're a couple of comedians, and we're about to play a really crazy practical joke on a friend of ours who's staying here tonight by the name of G. Riley, who's also a comedian. Oh, the one that's on the signs on the freeway. Yeah, the one that's on the signs on the freeway. So as a practical joke, we went to the store, and we made this messed up racist gift basket. That's, <laughs> that's why you can smell fried chicken. And she was like, what? You need Jesus, that's what you need. <laughs> Kiki, girl, you better hang up that phone. You ain't gonna believe what I'm looking at over here, girl. Listen, we think it would be hysterical if we could have you deliver the basket for us. She lost it. Oh, the hell you didn't. <laughs> I know you didn't just ask me to take that to a black man. You are out your damn mind. Oh, Lord, Lord, give me the strength to not kill this big-ass Mexican over here, Lord. Mm-mm. Uh-uh. Okay, look here, Nacho Libre. I don't care who you are. I am not doing it. Hell no. I'll give you 50 bucks. Where that mother at? We follow her to the hotel room. She knocks on the door. Martin and I hide by the elevator on the floor. She knocks, <laughs> she opens the door, sees a beautiful black woman standing there with a gift basket. This is for you, baby. He says, thank you, closes the door. <laughs> she walks away and she sees us on the ground hiding, right? And she's like, y'all still going to hell. <laughs> we get up and we walk over to the door and we put our ear, listen, shh, listen. This is what we hear. Inside. <laughs> Woo! Chicken! <laughs> oh, Kool-Aid! <laughs> Malika! He's getting excited over every single item he's pulling out of the basket. He gets to the greeting card. What can a Fresno love the Chamber of Commerce? Hell yeah. Then we feel him flipping the card over because his voice changed. He's like, oh yeah, man, this is, what the f Outside the door, we heard racist bastards. <laughs> when we heard racist bastards, we lost it. Ah! Housekeeping is freaking out. ¿Qué está pasando allá? ¿Qué andan haciendo ustedes? Muchachos, ¿qué está pasando, gordito? ¿Qué andas haciendo? We're laughing, we're crying, we got boogers coming out. We can't take it anymore. We knock on the door. <coughs> he yells, who is it? Too easy. Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> He rushes the door. I put my finger on the peephole so he can't see who it is, right? The knob starts to jiggle, then the door explodes open, and he's like, what? And he sees us, and he's like, ah! <laughs> What's up, G? Man, y'all give a brother a heart attack. <laughs> Did you like your basket? Man, that was messed up. Did you like it? Man, I love all that shit. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, a story that has been seven years in the making. I would like for you to now hear, for the first time ever, the other side of that story. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I flew him here to Hawaii so that he can share this with you. Give it up for my friend, Mr. G. Right? I gotta be honest, I didn't know it was racist. I thought it was lunch. <laughs> I, I, th I thought it was lunch. I didn't know it was racist until I got back to my neighborhood and brothers in my neighborhood looked at me. They say, man, I, I don't believe you let that Mexican guy do that to you, man. That was messed up. I know you got him back. I said, what, buy him lunch? 
I can't afford to buy that man lunch. If I, if I buy him lunch, he'll be getting me again. But see, you gotta understand, it was the perfect set of circumstances when it happened. Because I'm laying across the bed in the hotel. I had never been to Fresno before. And I wanted something to eat, and I didn't know where to go eat. So I'm laying across the bed, and I'm saying to myself, where could I go eat? I wish I had some food. And all of a sudden, magically, there's a knock on the door. And a black girl shows up with a gift basket. And I took the gift basket, and I said, they know how to treat their comedians up here in Fresno. <laughs> and I'm walking to the bed, and I can feel the heat, and I can smell the chicken from the gift basket. And I'm like, oh, this is cool. Because nobody smells chicken and thinks of racism, right? <laughs> I see the watermelon, I'm like, oh, this is cool. They know how to treat a comedian up in here. <laughs> I get to the card and I look at the card and I go, what the <laughs> is going on? I said, oh my God, I'm working for the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> and I really, I really started to pay because in my head, I'm saying to myself, is this for real? Because there were billboards all over the city with my picture. And I started thinking they were trying to scare me out of town. <laughs> so now I don't know what to do, right? And I start trying to call a promoter and the promoter's not answering the phone and it's festering in my head and I'm nervous and I'm pacing in the room and all of a sudden there's a knock on the door, right? And I go, oh my God, they come to get me. <laughs> so I... So I ease over to the door, right? And I look through the peephole, right? And all I see is a brown dot, right? And I go, I, I hear somebody out there because I hear the breathing, right? I hear <laughs> So this was about 60 pounds ago, right? I, <laughs> so I go to look down up under the door, right? <laughs> and I say, oh my God, it gotta be about five or six of them out there. Oh my God. like this. I figure, okay, you know what? If it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. You know, if it's gonna happen, I'm gonna go down swing it, right? So I put my best black face on. You know, I, I tried to look mean. You know, I look, I look like this guy right here. I look like that guy right there, right? And I go, who is it? And they go, Chamber of Commerce. And I'm like, oh my God, the Chamber of Commerce is the Ku Klux Klan. And I'm panicking, so I get to the door, right? and I pull the, open, the door open, and when the door opens up, these guys are falling all over the hall laughing at me. They're rolling all into the cleaning lady's car. The cleaning lady didn't know what was going on, right? She's scared to dust because she sees a black dude with no shirt like this, so she grabs the lemon pledge like it's pepper spray, right? She's ready to get... <laughs> so everything, now that I realize it's a practical joke, Everything calms down, because I remember that I remember how hungry I was. I'm like, okay, cool. Practical joke, right? So I go in the bathroom to wash my hands. While I'm in the bathroom washing my hands, I hear a commotion in the other room, right? I go back in the other room. They're going through the gift basket. The maid is leaving with the watermelon. Martina's drinking my 40, and this <laughs> bastard is eating my chicken! <laughs> Show enough, yo, who's the baddest? Yo, hit them funny bones with them comedic acrobatics. Feel the force, boy. Quit all that chatter. I just get more fluffy. Hopefully the chocolate cake is fatter. Chocolate cake fluffy. Mm -hmm. We're Hawaii to Cali fresh. Yes, you got your Hawaiian shirt pressed. Oh my God, yeah. It's prone, so milk, tough like King Kong. Everybody standing up, fluff it up and say, 